You alright Bruce? Looking a bit wet this morning. Here we are again, look. Bit of a change this week. I've actually got myself a mooring for the summer. Would you believe it? Because like, as easy as this looks, and um, I've got myself a really good slipway here, but you know, even for slipway access, you have to pay a couple of hundred quid usually. Um, and it's lovely here, my car's secure, you know, all that sort of caper. Right, hang on. There I am, looking very, Tresgay today, sorry, it's me air, it needs cutting. Right, um, yeah, so that's the plan, Stan. I'm here on a beautiful part of the Middle Thames. My mate Terry is fishing from his boat downstream. It's like a proper little carp gathering, the summer of love, Terry's calling it. <laughs> um, and anyway, here we are. So, I'm gonna get the boat in the water in a minute and I'll speak to you again. Well, I've had worse evenings, that's for, for, that's for sure. Got the rods out, lovely bit of river. Yeah, nice bit of uh, nice bit of ribeye steak on the go. Everything's pretty rosy if I'm honest. I'm at the bottom end of a stretch, a new stretch for me. I've not caught carp out of this stretch yet. I've got a couple of rods cast across the different bits. You know, like you would, like anyone would. Water's clear, flow's dropped out of it after all that rain. It was really muggy last couple of days. This is the sort of spot they would spawn. Um, anyway, yeah. Thought I'd have a little mooch down here. Do a night, see what I see in the morning. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Check out me air. Needs cutting, doesn't it? Oh, right. What's the plan, Stan? Well, it's been really hot, isn't it? I've been at home. There's big regattas on on the river, which means all the gym palaces are out, and there's lots of very ignorant, very wealthy, <laughs> very old uh, people tearing up and down the river in giant boats, and they they go way too fast. And it's not much fun being in a little boat, let me tell you. Especially when they go past after dark, like. You like this, Whoa, smack, smack. <laughs> anyway, it can get a bit tiresome. So I've been at home for a couple of days. Um, I put my boat on a mooring, believe it or not, for the rest of the summer. Not just for me, but for the kids and uh, me girlfriend and me friends. I've got a couple of friends coming over from elsewhere and stuff. I'm gonna go out on the boat for a few days. And therein lies the lesson. I've been ever so lucky to be able to get a boat, do you know what I mean? And um, and you've got to share the love, like in all things in life, fishing especially, goes around, comes around and all that. So yeah, I've got a mooring, my mooring's actually on the main river. Um, <clears throat> boats outside of me in, a fuel pump and it doesn't look great now, it's solid with weed and cabbages and pads and stuff. Um, but when I cast under them jetties that are out in front of where I moor up, it's a bit deeper and clear. And um, maybe not now, but certainly in, in the autumn, it should give me, I'm hoping, lovely perch times and uh, a few carp as well. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Imagine that. I can pull my car up next to my boat on my mooring. So it'd be great if I can just, not now, they're away spawning. And anyway, roundabout way, typical Nick, like start going off on 50 tangents and that. Um, Oh yeah, I've just had the best cup noodle. It's not really a cup noodle, it's a ramen. Sukiyaki beef. I'm not really down with pot noodles. But that's uh, number one in Japan apparently. I don't know if you believe the blurb. But I can tell you now, it was absolutely incredibly good. Proper, not, not super hot or anything, but like really, really good. I'm gonna buy every one they've got when I go in there next time for the autumn. I'm gonna leave them in the, in the boat. So anyway, I'm in a weir pool. I've had a good look around. When it was really hot, I went home. I went home and laid on my bed in my pants all day with a fan on me. Um, 
Yeah, well, because it was just too hard to be boating up and down the river, I would have cooked. Like a cooked. I would have cooked. So anyway, it's still warm today when I came out. But anyway, Monday now. Let all the weekenders and the um, talking boaters, like not fishermen, really. Um, let all the weekenders do their thing. Everyone wants to go out on the river when it's lovely, don't they? And who can blame them? Like I went part, like I came down at the weekends, popped into the boat and that, and uh, it, the river was just going off with people, and the pubs were busy, and there was just loads and loads of people having a lovely time, which is great. But I'll leave it till it quiets down, and then I can go fishing, and it's a lot nicer, more enjoyable. Anyway. I'm in a weir pool. The reason for that is I saw some carp in the weir pool. I've been looking and the stretch I'm on is probably four times as long as the stretch I fished last year. Um, which is problematic in itself. Plus I don't know anything about it. There's a couple of lads that have fished on that stretch for a long time. I could send them a message and have a chat with them but that's not me. I like to do my own thing. Um, and it's been really, really weedy. I've been walking, I've been walking, I'm boating up and down the stretch today. And the, you know, the sun's been out and the water's cleared up a little bit after all that rain and the flooding and stuff. And I can see the extent of the weed. It is unreal. All the, the whole stretch, like unreal. Um, but when you look at it objectively, there's probably three bits of the stretch. It's all full of cabbage and pads and it all looks super carpy. You don't see any carp when you're driving about. And it all looks super carpy, but two or three bits in particular are like incredibly weedy. One is just down from this weir, which you could only fish if you've got a boat. It's all big posh houses down there. And um, I came up in the weir earlier, and bear in mind, I haven't seen a fish on this stretch yet this year. There's been a couple caught. Um, one of the lads that's fished here for years, I, I, I went past him, he's got a boat. And um, I see on Instagram he'd caught a couple, fair play. Um, obviously a good spot for the start of the season or for the spawners, but I'll leave him to it because that's how it is. You know, um, there's a big lesson to be learned there as well for a lot of you out there. You know, just because some you see someone catch one or you see where they're fishing doesn't mean that you can go and fish there. That's not what we call good angling. Um, I've got a friend at the minute who's fishing on the stretch I was on last year and already, already, um, people are just jumping in exactly where he was the night before and stuff um, because they don't know any better and they think, well, if he was there, that must be where the fish are. But of course, we don't fish on the river for you know to experience stuff like that. We fish on the river to do our own thing and to experience a bit of freedom. So as soon as it becomes like a lake and people are jumping in on you and you can't get anything going because people are like we call it sheeping, which is a bit of a derogatory term, but it's a bit of a derogatory act when you're um, our sort of angler. So anyway, I came up in the weir. I'd been looking. I couldn't find any carp. I'd fished either end of the stretch. Um, looked at all the likeliest bits, just couldn't find them, couldn't find them anywhere. Um, I knew that they must be together somewhere spawning. Probably at the extremities, they usually are. They can either like, you know, I'm in a weir now, there's a couple of carp in this weir today when I boated in. I saw them by complete chance as well. But like, like I said before, you know, like happened to me last year, the ones I caught at the start of the season last year were by complete chance. Acting, acting on stuff that you see or little hunches and that's angling isn't it you know and when it pays off it makes it all the more enjoyable well anyway I've seen a couple today in this weir pool they've either been spawning and I've come here for a rest um, I literally stumbled across them spooked them one of them shot round the boat a million mile an hour and the other one was sat there was more but I could you know I was so desperate and getting out and like the weir was pushing me one way and I was trying to like not rev the motor to spook these fish anyway I spooked one it came flying past the boat thousand mile an hour I didn't actually see it very well at all it was 20 pounder or something but there was a bigger one at the, in the weedy bit beyond it and I see him actually head on before they spooked I, I fucking, oh it's a carp it's a carp and then boom, 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 like a carp shot off to me right and the bigger one I was trying to keep an eye on him because he looked like a mirror he was stout and wide and um Anyway, you can't ignore it like that. Not in my game. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm always para, do you know what I mean? Para that someone's gonna see me or someone's gonna ruin it. That's just years of fishing pressured lakes with lots of people with no morals, you know. Um, and when you come to the river, you shouldn't really ever be expecting anything like that. But of course it happens because people are just scummy. They, they can't help themselves, especially when there's carp on the go. And uh, all they want on their social media is a picture to say I've caught a Thames carp. They don't, you know, they don't care about the fact they poached it from someone else or jumped on the back of someone's work. 
you know, there's a lot of anglers like that out there these days. Um, mainly because they haven't been fishing long enough to learn it, you know. We learn it over a long time, fishing busy, pressured lakes. Um, and you have to learn etiquette and morals and stuff like that straight on, or you'll never get anywhere in, in fishing. Anyway, I've seen these carp here, and when you when you see something like that, you know, oh, you know, it was 35 degrees two days ago, much much cooler today, but they were still happy in the weir. I'm just I'm erring on the side of caution that these are fish that are probably already spawned further down the river, and have done what they usually do, um, and they headed up into the weir to recover. But there's a flip side to that. <coughs> They could have been here because they can smell pheromones of fish that have been spawning above the weir on the next stretch up and funny enough they did spawn just above this weir so perhaps they're smelling the females above the weir and you just don't know but that's fishing that's what makes it so much fun i guess you're ever learning anyway whatever the reason they're here they're here Well, I don't know if you can hear me, middle of the night, and there is my first one from a new stretch, from a very, very roaring weir pool, as you can hear, at one o'clock in the morning. But all are grateful, all are grateful. I'm not going to get it out and mess around with it. I'm just going to put it back and hopefully get a better one. Anyway, he's a nice one. This one reminds me of old Blacktail from Autumn, one side of him, but proper old mirror. Exactly what we're after. Thames Wacker. Well, I say a Wacker, like it's all relevant, isn't it? 20 pounder out of the Thames is worth anything to me. Just love it. But anyway, here he is. He's a beauty. Gave me a mega scrap. Bag was absolutely full of krill this morning. He'd been troffling on his own while the others have been up in the channel spawning somewhere, I think. But you've got to be happy with that haven't you? Oh. Give you a quick show of his other side and we'll get him back because like literally I've been watching them like slowly head you know back and tails coming over the top of the shallow weed in the entrance to this back channel in front of me. Oh. Perfect. Lovely old Thames bruiser. You've got to be happy with that. And yeah, so polar opposites. Caught one, not last night, the night before, from the very other end of the stretch, miles and miles away. And then one last night from here. Um, and seeing as they've all just turned up on me mob banded, I've redone the rods in true uh, Thames style. I've redone the rods at first light. Well, a bit later than first light. We had a bottle of wine and a big barbecue, so I think I've probably redone them about quarter to six or something. But that's fine. And since then, I must have seen 20 carp appearing over the weed. But I'm happy with that. Let's get him back and uh, hopefully, hopefully, we live in eternal hope on the river that <laughs> there'll be another one to show you at some point soon. Wicked. Ooh, it's warm. Right. I guess if you listen, you can tell that I'm not in England. Last time you saw me, if indeed it works out like that, was on the Thames at lovely mirror cart. Anyway. Long story short, I'm back in sunny France, a long way from home, if truth be known. Um, and I've come on an actual holiday, <laughs> you know, not like a fishing holiday, which is always every holiday. This is an actual holiday. I'm with my girlfriend, Sue, um, and something a bit different. You know, this time we're on the River Lot in southwest France, real old historic river, beautiful countryside, lovely part of the world. It's warm, humid today, and it's actually a bit stormy. They haven't had rain here for five weeks. Um, and from what we've seen, like I'm looking at the forecast every day from now on, it's 36, 37, 38, 40, maybe. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, I'm here, courtesy of a lot of carp. Um, a lad I know, Joachim, I don't know how you pronounce his name, Dutch lad. I met, I've met all over, I say all over France, met him a couple of times over the years in France. Um, you know, he's an experienced lad, he's been about. Um, done a lot of the same sort of fishing that I have, I guess. Um, and he's settled in France. Um, got married, lives just up the road from the river here, and uh, he's invested in a couple of boats. So, um, you know, I don't really do commercial fishing. A lot of my fishing ain't, couldn't really be described as commercial in any sense. Um, but this is, you know, this is a holiday trip. I've like, 
he's bought a couple of boats, kicked them out for carp fishing. And really it's gonna, you know, there's gotta be so many people that I know and watch my stuff and like English based people that, that will look at this and think, oh, I'd like a bit of that. And not just carp anglers either. Like if you're into barbel fishing or fishing for zander and perch and whatever, like this holiday <laughs> really would pull your string. Um, so yeah, I'm here with Sue. Um, we drove down yesterday, long way as usual, stopped off at a massive lake that I visited earlier in the spring and we stayed there last night and it was just lovely, silent, you know, but it's summer now, you know, we're at, I don't know what it is now, what is, what's the date Sue? It's alright, don't worry about it, anyway, it's the end of July is it? Anyway, I'm completely useless with timing, so um, anyway, yeah, we're in, yeah, last week of July I think we are, sorry, there you go, I'm not that thick. Uh, last week of July, um, it's going to be Scorchio. Um, we drove down, arrived at the big lake last night and it was beautiful, like I say, we had a nice barbecue and a bottle of wine and um, had a look around and stuff and anyway we settled on this spot in a sort of an arm of the lake, There's, I think the lake's got five arms, at the bottom of the smallest arm, it was just remote, you know, all the, all the port and the restaurants are over the other side of the lake. We dropped in there and we, I didn't fish, stupidly. Typically, I was knackered, you know, the night before a trip, as usual, I don't sleep. Um, <laughs> so I hadn't had hardly any sleep, then a long drive, and then we got down. Anyway, last night I woke up in the middle and I boom, 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 like an absolute, <laughs> sounded like a giant, like they all do in anywhere that's definitely quiet. It could have been a 20 pounder, I doubt it, but it, a big and woke me up. And then this morning we, we sat there, I made sort of coffee and another run, I should have put a rod out, but hey, hey ho, we're on holiday. So anyway, here we are. I might as well show you the boat so you get a bit of an idea. Um, We've been dropped off, we've been shopping, we've got all our stuff, got loads of bottles of wine, and the boat is kitted. You've got power, a fridge, beds. Anyway, let me show you what I'm talking about. Lovely times, check it out. So we've got we've got a boat for dropping rigs and stuff. I've got two pods set on the back, we've got a nice little outboard, loads and loads of space. Um, yeah, it's a big bit of kit, solar panel on the roof, uh, inverter power literally we've got absolutely everything we could possibly need we've already stocked up we've got loads of ice in one cool box and like a gas a gas fridge freezer thing in there so you know we are pretty much set for the week um, and what are we going to do well what choices do you make what is the choice did you only have a choice i said to sue on the way down you know i don't know what to do I've never fished that bit of river. i've really <laughs> really done it and of course the only decision is are you going upstream or downstream that's about it you've got a week you could go as far as you could upstream and then but like yeah you'd have a different you'll have a different vista every night but um no i'm gonna stick i'm gonna stick to this bit here i think if i can i can go several stretches and then you can't go any further it's sort of not passable by boat um and not even really accessible by car either so like you know a lot of the bit, bits that he's put these boats on it has been well thought out there's obviously really big fish about um but also carp in numbers so i'm hopeful i'm hopeful sue's never caught a carp believe it or not um last year when we were sort of together and going out on my boat i was full on fishing for you know made it difficult this year sue's got to catch a carp so tonight first things first we're loaded we're ready to go i haven't tied any rigs or anything like that i'm not that keen um but uh, it just means I've got to do it last minute. But that's not a problem standard. I'm gonna get. We're gonna get up river. Try and find somewhere nice to anchor. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'll show you around the boat in a second, and I'll speak to you in a bit. All the kit, nice barbecue. I've got a couple of buckets of particle and a couple of buckets of boily. Um, as usual, I bought absolutely loads and loads and loads of kit, um, but it just sounds like I'm not going to need it. You know, the river is, you know, it's difficult fishing. There's big carp here, big carp. It's, I think this stretch has done them to over 65 pounds, and so the, all the all the immediate ones in the area. So, you know, really, it's going to be sensible carp fishing. You know, I could. So you've got a nice fridge. We've got it proper stocked up. We've got all our goodies. It's all looking real good. We're going to have a, literally, we're going to have the loveliest of times. Here we are, beautiful bit of river, and I mean a really beautiful bit of river. 
and as usual I'm trying to steer with one foot and look for carp and try and pick out spots to fish for tonight. Well anyway we've been working our way up this beautiful snaggy, I mean this, none of this is fishable unless you're in a boat and we just saw our first two carp, I tried to video but it was on zoom and I'm a noddy and like I said uh, this is a big bit of kit to be trying to steer when there's a bit of a breeze, which there is at the minute, funny enough. But yeah, lovely spots. We've seen absolutely loads of beautiful, beautiful areas already. And um, it's just about making up our minds where we're going to go tonight. Try and get to see our first carp, let alone first lock carp. So hopefully we'll manage to do that in the next day or two. But so far, so good. It looks absolutely amazing, doesn't it? What a lovely bit of river. And uh, I'm kitted up this time. I've got maggots and halibut pellets to see if we can get a few barbel. Um, oh yeah, it's going to be lovely times, like fishing, lovely times. Oh, it's a tough old life, ain't it? Well. Sit rep. We are. Had a good mooch about today. Drank a bottle of cheap Corbiers, got a headache, went to bed, got up again, been swimming, got the rods out on this beautiful stretch. Uh, what did we see today? <laughs> the fish just jumped out. We see uh, two carp up river, well, Sue did. She was looking off the side of the boat as we cruised past. Um, we've seen one carp out in the middle downstream of us here, definitely a carp, big splodusha. And you won't be able to see, but down there, like a long way down, you've got a big red boy. There you go. That marks the old lock and weir from years before. And uh, if you look through that gap down to those trees, which is probably about, I reckon, getting on for, it's got to be 800 to 1,000 yards away. It's a long way away. Um, I've seen two massive splashes. And in the last hour, right next to the boat here, there's been like the bow wave of I don't even know what it is must be a big catfish coming up onto these shallows here um, because the bow wave like 10 minutes ago was so vast it went literally across the river it was incredible whatever it was was <laughs> monstrous oh, I've got a bit of finest berth burning away there so I'm going to get back to turning that over and hopefully give you a bit of a report in a bit Nice, healthy living. Bottle of ice cold Coat de Provence. Things is good. There you go, it's just got dark and we've had our first one. Only a little one, but all are welcome. Lovely. Oh, that's a lot bigger. Nice and easy, Absolutely ripping. Fought like a mad thing and that's still going mad. I'll lift him out in a minute. But yeah, he's a nicer one. Here I am, look, hot, dishevelled, but very, uh, I'm in holiday mode, I'm having a lovely time, been swimming, lovely bit of river, we've been doing some swimming, some chilling out, and during the day, to be honest with you, it's so bloody hot, I think it's going to, they said, I'm sure that they said 40 degrees or thereabouts tomorrow, uh, last night was thundery and lightning, but it was so hot, we couldn't even sleep on the boat. In there was just like 
unbelievable. So we luckily I bought my mosquito domes, my English army ones, and we put them up on the back on the deck. So we slept outside under the stars and it was just that touch cooler. So it was like, yeah, it was lovely. Um, but yeah, hectic action would be best way to describe it. Not long after dark, while that one's gone over, ripped off, nice little mirror cart, beautiful, welcome, well welcome, great start. You know, first one of the trip and all that really happy and then it just carried on like um, the same rod did a nicer carp in the night a 20 pounder 20 22 24 pounds something like that um, which wasn't in the bag when I got it out this morning got away um, which is just quite amusing um, and loads and loads of chub and barbel like ridiculous couldn't keep a rod in and by this morning when I woke up all the rods are rooks in the butt ring um, it's hard work you know that um, Joachim said to me like you know all oh Kingfisher just missed your head, so did you see that? That was incredible. Was yeah, he was like literally about an inch from your front of your head. Um, anyway, yeah, um, yeah. Joachim said at night quite often. I don't know why, but the flow increases. You know, whether they run water off at night, about from barrage to barrage. But anyway, um, he recommended like, you know, like a long line in across the river. So basically, using elastic bands, go over, find your spot, drop it. Um, bait up and then go back to the bank and then elastic band your braid to the tree then come back across the river tighten it all up so you're fishing like a washing line all the lines out the water um, and because it's non-navigable or certainly it's quite a bit of this section these sections are non-navigable really um, you, you know there's no drama you can fish your lines out the water um, but of course that means you have to anchor correctly um, with two of us on the boat moving around every time the line slackened a bit and touched the surface of the river of course the current grabbed it uh, and the river's full of like a brown slimy stuff that you don't notice when you look when you first look but the second a line's in the water for more than a minute it starts to build up and the, the rod just goes over and over and over and in the end it like drags the lead and it's all ruined or breaks the elastic band off um, but yeah the ones I'd banded across the river which looked to be the better carpy spots to be honest um, just did chub and barbel like you know and a uh, uh, you can say, oh, you've got to be careful, like, you know, quite often you'll wake up with a barbel on the end because they can't break the elastic band off the trees. But, of course, I'm using bells, so even though they couldn't break the elastic band, I was still getting ding -a, a ling I was getting loads of ding -a lings last night because at night this river is just, you know, when you're going out to re-drop in the boat, with a bright head, so you can't see anything. There's so many bugs and insects and bats. The bats are just constantly flashing around you. And, um... Yeah, it was a bit of a nightmare. So anyway, the first night we'd had a mega barbecue. We'd bought some really expensive French beef and nice wine, and it had been a long day and very little sleep. The previous I had a cracking headache um, from drinking wine all day, like living the dream. I'm on holiday. I'm going to drink wine in 30 whatever degrees and be a div. So yeah, I didn't feel too great. Last night squared me up a bit. Um, we had a lovely barbecue and had a cold bottle of Cote de Provence which was real nice. Slept on the deck, uh, loads of bites, loads of hecticness. Um, yeah, didn't bring my 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 kit, you know, uh, because the stuff's on the boat, but the the, wa the wastelings on the boat are like the old style retainers that they just get out of straight away. Um, so, mate, you dropped me down a couple of proper sacks this morning, so I won't be losing no more. Um, not that I'm worried about a 20 pounder, but it'd be nice to show you it's part of the trip, isn't it? So yeah, that's where we're at. Um, we've decided, because we're on holiday, where's oh, Sue? Sue's behind me somewhere in the river. There she is, she's out there swimming. Um, we've decided that because we're on holiday, I'm not gonna knock myself out. I'm just gonna, I'm not, you know, I wanna look at every stretch and then start donking leads a bit. Like it's too hot for all that malarkey. I'm just gonna chill out, enjoy ourselves. We've got really well set up here. We've got, it's well comfortable you know we've got a proper gas fridge a big one full of vegetables and cold stuff and we've got our own cool box packed with ice uh, a couple of every you, you name it there's enough room and storage on here i could have bought my bed chairs my brollies my like just everything um so we're well comfortable make no mistake we're well comfortable um just in the day at the moment because it's so hot there's precious little point in killing yourself so Today's a bit different because we had that stormy night last night. It didn't actually rain till this morning and then we only had a bit, which was bizarre because it was flashing and banging all night and I was expecting like a deluge. I was thinking, oh, what it sounds like take, it's the wind whistling through the braid. Um, 
yeah, I was, it was crashing and banging, loads of lightning foot. Well, it's going to absolutely <laughs> down, but it didn't. Um, just this morning, we had a little bit. We were asleep on the deck in the domes, just slept, slept on the sleeping bags on the floor. And um, I heard it start raining. I said, Sue, quick, we better get out. We're going to get soaked. So I was really expecting it to come down, but no. Nah. Went back to bed in the ca in the main cabin, which was nice and cool this morning. Got another hour. God, did I need it. I tell you, I'm not as young as I used to be. All this like night after night after night with no sleep. It destroys me, especially in the hot. So yeah, that's where we're at. Lovely night last night. Couple of carp, I don't know, half a dozen barbel, same with chub. Really enjoyable, but the stretch below that we were on was mega, mega shallow. Like you could see the bottom almost everywhere and I ain't down with that. Big carp like cover. So I'm looking for little bits of deeper area. There was, the, where we fished last night was a short run of a couple of hundred yards of deeper water and it's obvious there was fish there. I heard carp last night, caught carp last night, saw carp downstream of me last night, but typical Nick, like I like to have a little bit of a, I like a new vista each day. Um, so that's what we decided to do, we're on holiday. Gonna have a little uh, mooched about. We've come through the lock this morning, that was a palaver, but we're through. Um, they're so infrequently used, they were all broken and bits hanging off, might sort of wedge a stick in one to get it to work. Um, but yeah, we're up on the next stretch now, which is, I think a bit bigger. Uh, certainly a bit wider there's a big campsite below us and a massive island and that island like down the back end of it is just carp central it's like the biggest monster snags lily pads oh, something sizable we like it looks mega it looks a bit less barbly and a bit more carpy uh, and where we were last night was certainly like there was barbel literally somersaulting out the water this morning so yeah we're done for the day it's afternoon we've decided to consciously seek out a bit of shade have a swim have a nice lunch cold glass of wine in a minute maybe a nap and then um, head off about six o'clock I think I'm gonna go back downstream about half a mile to that big island we passed um, and sneak up the back of there tonight lots of options to put rods big and it's deeper I was donking a lead as we went through it, it was like eight or ten foot and I just thought you know this looks the part to me so uh, yeah I'll keep you informed Carpy old spot. Listen to it, listen to it. If, if it ain't the frogs, it's the Mexican night at the campsite. Like, it, <laughs> you have to laugh, I tell you, because like, it's so ridiculously loud. It's not even funny. The barbecue's still a little bit warm for round two. Anyway, the rods are out. Up there in the darkness is the campsite. Oh well, free entertainment, I guess. Well, I've had worse mornings. Oh, it's a bit heavy handed on the old zone. Oh. Tell you what, I ain't no David Bailey, am I? But here we are. What a lovely night that was. And do you know what? It drove me mental. Like it. That's a nice spot here. Look at this. Little dot islands and weed and 
loads of pads and cabbages and behind a big island here just above a weir I took a bit of footage of my drone which hopefully you'll be able to see but yeah it's mega here like literally untouched looking no swims no anglers but yeah what an incredible contrast last night was to the night before it's right that's my tea green tea healthy and I right um yeah the night before was so thick with flies and bitey stuff that even going to redrop a rod in the dark was almost impossible in the torchlight because just because of the amount of flies and <laughs> anyway last night here we're only about a mile upstream through a lock yeah about a mile i reckon tops on a different stretch this one's a bit more me it's much deeper carpier looking the last one you know literally from where we launched up to where we came through the lock you could pretty much see the bottom everywhere not my sort of thing and it was absolutely snoodled with barbel and chub um, yet yeah, last night here yeah, there was hardly any of that there was a few splashes but yeah anyway when I was doing the rods I said to Sue it'll be one of these two up to the right that goes up towards the fishing sort of upstream but behind the island here there's no current at all and yeah it was the left hander there fished proper snaggy margin over there but between the snags there was a set of pads and um, yeah I could see the yellow this side of the pads even as I was dropping them out near dark and uh, it was that one that went two in the morning absolute ripper tight line how I got it in I don't know it's literally like it's hard to explain but absolutely everywhere even there off the side of the boat it's 12 feet and it's absolutely the snaggiest bit of river you've ever likely to see and as I was playing my carp unsurprisingly I had two or three branches attached to the leader I was using 40 pound leaders um, because you know what to expect but yeah petrified old bits of wood all tangled around the line um, and I managed to get him in so I'm gonna sip my tea and show you him in a second <coughs> Yep, last night's spoil. And he's a lovely one, a real lovely one. Um, he gave me hell of a fight, Jesus. And no, no messing around, no bips and bops or bells rattling last night. No bats here, really different to the night before, like I said. Um, so yeah, mega pleased to get this one because he's just a lovely one. And uh, as last night's bigger one got away. Oh, tonight, oh, sorry, the night before's one got away out of the bag. This one didn't.
can see that. I've just walked up on the on the lock here and seen a couple of carp. There's, there's one on the top in the weed down there. And just then that, that little mirror I think it was just shot under this pipe somewhere. I can't see him. But anyway, yeah, as you like, walked up, found two carp for first second. Perhaps this, oh there's there, there's one. Anyway, they're only tiddlers. But you know me, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be chucking a bit of bread at one, I should think, for something to do in the wild. But yeah, wicked. This stretch looks a bit menacing. I think we're getting up towards the, the end. Like, it's almost impassable. And I'll tell you for why. It's because I think at the end of this stretch, that's the end of the navigable bit. You, ca you can't, literally can't go any further without, um, yeah, you can't, you cannot go any further. Um, this is the last lock, I think. There might be one past this, but... As you can see, the, the river's almost completely weeded up up there. I'm reticent to take the boat up through that because I don't want to be phoning International Rescue to come and get me. So, oh, there you are. Here you are, look. Down here in the. Look for him. Oh, I can't see. But anyway, there's a nice carp down there. I'll have a go for him in a minute. old morning already roasting probably 30 degrees already I guess that was dry when we came through yesterday or the day before it's a funny old place with a flow and whatnot we're in the lock we're just about to get sorted go downstream do a bit of shopping so yeah I mean it's, it's a, I'll just give you a quick demonstration like it, you know it's remote yesterday we went all the way up as high as you can go the last this is the last navigable lock no sorry it's one more lock and we went up <laughs> i had to clear all that this morning just to get the boat through like it's you know you don't see other boats when when the french see you coming along in a boat they look to stop and stare with their hands on their ears so anyway <laughs> it's been it's been amusing uh, we had a lovely day yesterday absolutely lovely day yesterday we um and can see me I can't see me it's so bright um, yeah we had a lovely day yesterday we went uh, where did we go yesterday oh, yeah, that's beautiful um, where did we go yesterday we went right up to the very top um, and there's so little boat traffic at the very top section that it was almost completely weeded solid massive beds of pot and McGee and an absolute nightmare and um, we ended up turning around and coming back but we spent the afternoon we spent the afternoon in um, in a beautiful weir pool at the top of the next of this next stretch uh, full of barbel rolling constantly and that and it was scorchio probably it said 38 um, but then said 40 it, it was brutally hot and we spent the day jumping in and swimming I got a bit of footage it was actually really enjoyable um, and then we went through the lock as it, as the sun went off about half six because it's so brutal you got no idea um, and I'm pretty fair skinned and, and like I, I have to I you know I was hiding, it was savage. Um, so, I don't know if, I'm, there's me waffling away, I don't even know if you can hear me, but just out of interest, just while I'm here, check out that for a fish ladder. Look at it. That is a proper piece of engineering. Amazing, really. I wonder if the carp ever use it. 
lovely spot nonetheless. Right, now I've got the horrible work, and it is a horrible work, let me tell you, of doing the locks. I take it for granted on the Thames in England, you know, you turn up and even if the man's not there, you only have to press a couple of buttons. That's a bit different here, <laughs> I'll tell you. Yeah, that's some fish out of there. Right, so what we've got to do, we have to stamp on the button with your foot. Oh, it's hard work, like real hard work. Mm. We're starting, this is just the start. Where are you? Ooh. I tell you what, this trip's been a workout. I ain't never worked so hard. Swimming, if I weren't swimming yesterday, I was. Uh, we spent. I spent about an hour diving in the bottom of the weir pool, trying to get back Sue's sunglasses. She dropped them. Dived in with them on her head. <laughs> I'm sure we've all done that. <laughs> oh, who'd be me, eh? Jesus. Right. Now we've done that. The next bit is. We have to close all of the, all of the, <laughs> Sue's laughing at me, like, what are you filming that for, you complete jabby? Yeah, that's right, what am I filming that for? As you can see, that was a really, really deep lock. A really deep lock. But of course, to get out, I've got to go all the way out there. And the lock's been full, so all those runs are covered in slime. It is quite literally deadly. <laughs> Absolutely deadly. <laughs> Why's my camera doing this? Anyway, yeah, we're at the bottom end of the of the stretch we started on. Um, Sue's gone off to get supplies. Uh, I looked on the maps, car four is like a quarter of a mile from here, which is a right touch, believe me. You know, I think we're three nights in. Um, and yeah, you know, we've run out of, we've run, we've run out of cold wine, for Christ's sake. Man's got, you know, where's your civility? <laughs> so anyway, Sue's gone off to get, look, it's a lovely bit of river, this. Um, Sue's gone off to get to supplies. Um, I think we're only going to stay one more night. Like again today, 38 to 40 degrees. Like it's it's hard work. Do you know what I mean? Real hard work. Like um, I expected, like you know, normal Nick fish. You know, I, I thought um, oh, there'll be plenty of places I'll be able to jump off. You know, make a little shady spot and that. But honestly, all the stretches we've fished, you know, you've got a couple of bits like slipways and that. But that's it. There's no shade on a lot of them. Um, and the rest of it is completely wild. When I say completely wild, you couldn't even get off onto the bank, not without some serious work. Um, and it's just too hot, you know, you like, you stop and tie the boat up, you're out of breath. Like a lock is like a major, believe me, a major thing. Um, by the time you've done it, like yesterday, I was just like, sweat was dripping off me. I was thinking, I'm meant to be on holiday. Anyway, yeah, it's forecast for the rest of the week. So rather than waste me time, you know me, I'm not gonna sit here, I'm gonna, go and sit in a bar and drink cold beer and go and have a look at a few lakes and see if I can find an opportunity uh, on my terms rather than being sat on a boat. Now don't get me wrong, like what a mega, mega holiday this makes for anyone. I mean we've got everything, like I've told you, we've got the full kit is in there. Um, it's quite a home from home, um, but in these conditions, like 40 degree conditions, like it's no fun. It was 25 degrees at night last night, um, no breeze. It was just died but we spent most of yesterday like i said in in the weir and it was beautiful like all the whole village was down in the weir it was that hot you know it's hot when the french all come down to the river anyway yeah we see a few carp yesterday in the lock uh, on the last stretch the sort of non-navigable bit and there was a, probably five carp in the in the lock cut itself in a big bed of weed and i was feeding them i actually got them going quite well they wouldn't eat bread off the top uh, but apart from that i got them going a bit on pellet but typically by the time i arrived to get a set a rod up and had a go for them it was like pushing 40 degrees and it had just got too hot they drifted off but barbel my god i'll tell you what like a dad and lads trip or uh you know if you're into a bit of river fishing like 
literally at the top of this stretch here, even as we're coming through at 11 o'clock in the morning, like the barbel and the chub are rolling non-stop. Like you could have the most epic trotting, trotting for chub, like floats, float tactics would just be incredible. And the barbel fishing well. We caught loads the first night without even, you know, using rigs that were way too big for them really. But if we'd have been fishing for them, I'd imagine the barbel fishing must be spectacular. Anyway, yeah, it's just too hot. It's just too hot. I'm not going to sit and suffer for the sake of it. So I'm going to do tonight, probably where we did the first night. Oh, this is an interesting story. Last night, because we, we went up the last stretch, it was too weedy to fish. We said, oh, we get back on the other stretch. That's just miles of nothing. Um, it all looks so good because it's all snags and pads and that, but it's just... You know, they like it where it's going on. And where I'd caught one the night before, that nice mirror, um, I was behind an island. Well, as I was looking up in the night, I kept seeing fish showing at the head of the island. There's a big weed bed there. And I was fishing to sort of the tail end of it, but probably a quarter of a mile downstream, really. Um, and there was no flow in the, behind the island at all. But at night, like I say, it's a funny, like the pumping station seemed to run at night. I don't know what it is, cheaper electric or whatever, I don't know. But like, the water gets drained off overnight so you put your rods out and then in the night the flow picks up and like basically all the weed starts to come down just drags all your leads um, usually when you're asleep and haven't even realized even with bells on you don't, you don't know it builds up it happens over a long period um, and yeah you know it's an arse ache when to wake up in the morning like and last night um, was my first night I got onto a group of what I would say a group of carp you, you see the thing is with the barbell and that rolling you're seeing fish at like three four hundred yards downstream thinking wow oh, that was definitely a car that's be look at them rings look at it and it's just going off constantly but last night we motored down um, to an area uh, above the island where I'd previously fished behind the island which is just like carp anglers heaven you know snags and incredible view and just like little dot islands and just spectacular but not really the best spot you know where I dropped the anchors it was like 12 foot silty and like under the boat was just snags of death you know it was it was just it weren't right beautiful but not the right bit anyway the right bit was the head of the island and as we boated down last night um, bearing in mind the night we spent behind the island was Mexican night and it went on all night it's about four in the morning God knows how they get away with it it was absolutely ridiculously loud thumping away like not just thumping it felt like it was next door to you and I was a good mile downstream from it all and uh, so we went back last night and set up at the head of the island um, it was really weedy and I hadn't been there long and we heard an almighty great big carp jump out like a big slosh up <laughs> went over just on dark light I was, <laughs> I was like you know I've got to get a rod out there got to get and there was some weed in the actual main chair and what had happened it got so hot I think all the fish it must have all the fish in the area must have been pushed into the the one little deeper I've been really surprised these stretches are really shallow on the most part you can see the bottom almost everywhere um, so the deeper bits are, are like are much, much few and far between um, and even up on the stretch above which seems to be a deeper stretch on the whole anyway it's really like the Thames like every stretch is different if you came here and fished this stretch and came back on the basis that this was fishing on the river lot you'd be like woefully shocked because like it's it's just incredible it's ri um, it's like a barbel river for the most part you see lots of carp we've seen lots of carp driving about small ones you know like big long commons 20 20 or 30 pound I'd guess at best um, but yeah I saw a big carp and then within an hour we'd seen sort of half a dozen and I reckon they were all big fish they weren't you know they weren't small fish um, and I had rods out um, and I said to Sue, typically, considering the display we've seen, I probably won't catch none tonight. I caught the first two nights from two different stretches. Anyway, last night I didn't catch none. Uh, the drifting weed had wiped out a couple of them, and a couple of the others I dropped in the dark in haste, and they weren't quite right. So, um, oh man, I was buzzing last night, like buzzing. But as it got dark, a geezer came out in a boat off the campsite in a dinghy, and uh, he was obviously cart fishing as well. And I, I didn't see him. I mean, perhaps he just got there. I don't know. But he weren't, listen, he, he weren't close to me. He must have been two or three hundred yards up the campsite. But I could just see problems. Do you know what I mean? I thought if I go back there tonight, he's going to have seen what I've seen. He's going to be trying to get rods more downstream. I thought I don't drive a thousand miles to be dueling with, with bloody fishermen. I honestly don't. Um, whether that means I don't go back up there and don't catch them carp, then so be it. It really doesn't make any odds to me. It, I had a mega evening last night, electric. After such a long day, I was so tired. Um, 
really tired, you know. Um, I'm a pretty fit bloke, you know what I mean? I get about a bit and I'm, I do me fishing and I'm always about, but this was like, you know, just br with the brutal heat as well, like it, it's a young man's game for sure, like it's so draining. Um, the only reason we enjoyed yesterday so much was because we were in a little town and we were actually set up in a park bit. Um, which looked no good for carp fishing or I'd have stayed there the night to be fair because it was beautiful and uh, I've got a bit of footage so you'll see it where we were jumping off the lock um, but that you know what am I going to do tonight well if we're going to call it a day tomorrow and head start heading back up country hopefully slightly cooler temperatures I don't mind once the thing is once you're on the bank no drama we'll drive about it'll get a bit up we'll go to the bar we'll have a little beer on press and chill and everything's lovely and you wait for the heat to go off and you go and find somewhere to put the rods out for the night that's holiday fishing or it certainly is to me you know i'm a full-on angler like you know holiday fishing is still probably a bit full-on for most people um but it's relaxing it's nice i've got i've got my girlfriend with me we're having a great time um yeah i've caught three carp three or four carp last night no barbell this doesn't seem like i said the stretches it only half a mile away and yet it couldn't have been different it was deeper on the hole um, lots of stuff showing but it seemed to be lots of small carp flopping out you know small carp six seven eight pound I guess they, they stock them through the whole lot system like yearly so there's always small carp about I mean I can only wish that we could take a leaf out of the French's book you know in the, in the River Thames and whatnot um, you know where they're in decline because they're classed as non-indigenous and we can't restock them um, whereas you come out here and the river's thriving all the time I'm driving about it's full of nice dace and chub and bleak and loads and loads of decent sized barbel it's just incredible catfish rolling in the evenings it's just alive um, and it's so nicer so much nicer to sit on a live river than one that you just you just sit there wondering how close you are to the nearest carp like um, you do, certainly don't feel like that here I think they're everywhere you know more or less um, so yeah we'll do the night tonight probably up where we caught a few the first night and if the rods do go tonight I'll let Sue try and wind one in it's just pot and beds I've got strong tackle and big hooks like um, and I managed to winch them out before and I'm sure she can do the same so I'll probably drop up there give her a chance at a, at a <laughs> river lock carp and then tomorrow pack the car go and get my car back from um, Joachim's house which is only 10 minutes up the road um, load the kit and off again once more hmm where to Nick do you know what I don't know um, like I said I can deal with the hot temperatures used to it fish casein in the summer for Christ's sake um, it was like this all every day when Mick and I were there you know to sit on the campsite it was in the low 50s like it literally felt like you were dying um, and because we were holiday fishing every day we'd sod off down to the McDonald's where the ice <laughs> where the ice cold air con was so lovely and we'd sit there and eat ice creams and talk rubbish during the day um, and use the free Wi-Fi lovely types um, so <laughs> holiday or not um, tonight we're fishing tomorrow somewhere new hooray for somewhere new freedom boilies I'm not drying them I've got um what I do is I about I guess about a year ago I got some 24 mil manila and air dried them until they're like stones they're the bigger lighter colored ones you can see the smaller darker are 20 mil just standard manila shelf life um, a mixture of the two and what I do is I don't try and rehydrate them I, I do what I call toffee apple in them I just uh, I soak them in a bucket, I dry them until they're stone-like, like literally over the winter, till they're literally, you, can, you can't bite them in half. You know, this sort of bait's just a total necessity for this part of the world. You know, if you come with soft bait, like you're just, you're reeling in every morning with nothing on the end and that just can't happen, you know, when you go into this expense and this trouble. So the, the simplest thing to do is to toffee apple them and, and like dry them out like stones and I mean like stones over a long period not a week or so it's no good like properly dry them out I usually dry them out for several months and when it gets to winter I salt them really heavily and that pulls all the moisture out of the bait that's left and keeps them in great nick through the winter and then I literally chuck them in a big sieve type or a sack and just shake all the salt off them um, then leave them again for a few days then bucket them up and literally top the buckets up with vanilla liquid cloudy vanilla liquid uh, and a few other little bits and bobs that I use um, and then leave them to soak you know they'll set in the bucket quite hard you pick the bucket up shake it nothing moves you have to kick it and roll it around a bit and like the trick is not to fill the buckets up to the top so you can keep breaking them up every few months and rolling them around or every few weeks whatever 
Um, and then when you get to France, like literally these were rock hard, absolutely rock hard. All the moisture and all the liquids had dried onto them and soaked into them in fact. Um, and they resemble toffee apples, they're, 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 they're hard and shiny um, and they're quite smooth to the touch but of course once they start to get warmed up they start to get tacky again um, and that's what you're looking at. Some of these look a bit orangey, that's because I dust them with chilli powder as well. That's just something I find works really well in warm water and especially flowing water, um, although we've not had much flowing water this trip. But anyway, yeah, just a quick bait tip, but that's, that's, that's what I'm doing mainly. Apart from that, obviously, I bring some particle, namely, usually, either a sack of peanuts or tiger nuts, um, or hemp. If I've, if I've got facility to boil, um, bring a burko with me and all that, I quite happily sit and do hemp. Um, but I like the bigger food items, which is why I like the big peanuts and the nuts and stuff. But unfortunately, they're so expensive, cost prohibits their use. You know, a sack is of peanuts is over 40 quid for the for the real deal and and for tigers 60 or 70 quid to get real good ones um so yeah but they are they are a necessity that's a nice change got the old car behind us tonight and we're on a beautiful stretch of river. We've got the mozzie domes up because we're going to sleep on the bank for a change. And we're not fishing tonight. As beautiful as it is, and believe me, it's it's incredibly beautiful. It is absolutely roasting. It's been a... Uh... Ooh, Thomas, let me think. There we go, look. You can see I'm cooked. It's been over 40 degrees for the last couple of days. Uh, so hot in fact <coughs> that it's just been a liability we can't go out on the boat during the day just too much it's, it would literally kill you um, and as and as easy as it's been it's been very easy for us we've got hang on let me just turn around sorry hit the stop button as easy as it's been for us we've got a lovely gas fridge in there and we've got all the mod cons but you know what, it's just too hot to do anything. Um, even the French are doing nothing. They've all come down to the river and everyone's been chilling and swimming. But anyway, as nice as it is, and believe me, it is lovely. As you can see, God, look at the state of me. I'm sweating like a beast and it's like, I don't know, 8.30 at night. But we spent the whole day here. I went off to the, uh, to the car for, got ice and Cote de Provence and all the lovely stuff. So tonight we've decided, do you know what, last night I caught a mirror carp, uh, only a little one, but again the, uh, oh, what's that turned up, again it was uh, just, just the flow picks up overnight, they start draining water off, it was a bit of a joke really, by morning all the rods had gone barbel or wiped out by weed and stuff, and do you know what, it's hard work at night, um, there's been no mozzies, the mozzie problem's been really not, not a problem here, little flies are more of a problem and biting horse flies and gnats and stuff but essentially not too bad at all but so what literally you can't do anything <laughs> when I say you can't do anything I'm not I'm not exaggerating it's just too hot I can just about drink cold Cote de Provence and eat snacks <laughs> anyway so that's where we're at tonight as lovely as it is we're not even gonna fish can't be bothered too hot uh, soaked anyway so yeah we're gonna just have we've got a nice salad on the go um, I think we're so busy in there making a lovely salad. Got a nice tomato and lime and onion salad and all that. We're living the dream. Uh, but fishing wise, I knew coming at this time of year was going to be a, a big ask, and I knew that the fishing was going to be really tough just because of the weather. Um, before I was coming, I was looking at it, it's 30 degrees, 28. I was thinking that's all right, 28, 30 degrees, I quite like that. And then by the time I was coming out here, it was 38 every day, and now it's 40 every day, and getting warmer. So we were going to leave a bit earlier, but um, the lad who I've got the boat off has gone away to see his family, so he's not even going to be back. So not for not till Friday at the earliest. So it's looking like we're quite happy to stay on the river till Friday. Um, I've got my car with me now. I went and picked it up, so I can go running off and getting cold drinks and ice and all the stuff to keep us alive. Um, and we're just going to have a lovely time, holiday mode, till Friday, and then we're going to head off north couple of nights somewhere interesting on the way home preferably somewhere new that'd be lovely eh um, but what a great trip we've caught a few carp loads of barbel loads of chub considering the time of year lucky to catch anything at all I think it's brutal um, and yeah we're gonna sit here this evening have something lovely to eat and see what we can see you never know we might even see a carp or two here it looks real good it's just above the next barrage down 
and you've got a real good vista here so we've got a good view all the way around so we're going to sit and have a lovely evening and see what happens and I'll uh, catch up with you tomorrow well another blisteringly hot day in the south of France well what can I tell you I had a lovely time last night um, and generally took it really easy had a nice barbecue oh no we didn't have a barbecue last night we had fajitas lovely um, and some cold cold coat de Provence uh, what else is going on yeah slowly packing the car um, yeah too hot to fish and the river's in dire condition really no water coming over the weirs um, oh, that's hard to temperatures each day 43 or more like savage just savage like really really hard work um, and I'm used to it relatively uh, despite being fair skinned I've done my bit in fishing in the south of France I know how challenging it can be we used to say at Casey years ago you know we used to go for a month and if we fished 10 or 12 days in a month that was that was good going and we were like ultimately keen then but like literally it just destroys you one, <laughs> one day in the sun fishing like you know early start late finish beers when you get back to the campsite and a chat and blah blah and by the next morning you're so destroyed you do one more day and then you have to have a couple of days off it's just how it is it's the nature of the beast and yeah the river's been in poor condition certainly for the last two days when it's been so hot we haven't even moved well, we've not even moved from here for a good 24 hours now uh, i've not had the runs out pointless um, even the barbel which have been like the most acrobatic <laughs> barbel you've ever seen they're constantly leaping out of the water and there's small carp and there's big chub and there's loads of other stuff they're all splosh 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 constantly all day and all night um perch striking at fright it, that's all stopped that all stopped two days ago we're seeing at the coolest part of the day literally first light seeing the odd chub and barbel roll still but absolutely nothing I haven't heard a carp for seems like ages now but anyway nothing ventured nothing gained um I don't regret a minute of it, I had a lovely time, I literally had a lovely time. Like I say, wrong time to do this trip, but it was a holiday for me anyway. Um, the fishing was always going to be secondary. Um, we've caught plenty of fish, we've had a lovely time. We've been up and down the river, um, some beautiful remote stretches, you know, literally remote. No access from the banks and that for mile after mile. Um, a really lovely experience. And as I said previously, a commercial trip, but commercial only in the fact that you know you can rent the boat off the man and and have a lovely time you know once you've got your boat you're as free as a bird like that's got to be the only way ain't it um, and we've been up and down the river stopped swum ate well I've had so well this weather too with me she's been cooking lovely cooking making beautiful salads and lovely healthy food it just just been pucker um, but yeah we're gonna head back